In a previous video, we talked about the network framework of a VMware cloud on AWS SDDC and how it provides connectivity between your on-premises data center, your Amazon VPC, and the internet. In this video, we will go over the information you'll need to get the most out of VMware Cloud on AWS on day one. The first bit of information required is a classless interdomain routing, or CIDR block, to provide IPs for the SDDC management components, which are managed by VMware, like your ESXi hosts and your vCenter server. The maximum number of hosts your SDDC can contain depends on the network mask in the CIDR block you specify. The table shows the maximum number of VMware Cloud on AWS hosts you could deploy based on the network mask value. The recommended mask is a slash 20, which would provide you with 125 hosts, but a slash 16 and a slash 23 are also supported. There are a few things you should consider when choosing your management CIDR block. Your CIDR range should be a private IP and not publicly routable address space. You must choose a range of IP addresses that does not overlap with the AWS subnet you are connecting to. If you plan to connect your SDDC to your on-premises data center, the IP address range you choose must be different from the ones in your on-premises data center to avoid IP address conflicts. You can't change your site range without redeploying your SDDC from scratch, so choose and plan carefully. The next thing to prepare for is a dedicated subnet in your Amazon AWS VPC to connect to your new VMware cloud on AWS. This information will again be used during the deployment process and will be used to create unique Elastic Network Interfaces, or ENI, connectivity between your VPC and your VMware cloud on AWS workloads. When choosing this subnet, Ensure it does not overlap any of the IP spaces you're planning to use in your VMware Cloud on AWS environment for your workloads or management components. The next thing you will need to determine are the logical networks that you're going to use for your VMware Cloud on AWS workloads. Some things to note when deciding on your logical networks. Don't overlap with a dedicated Amazon VPC subnet or management site ranges. If you will be using an IPsec VPN, these logical networks will only reside on VMware Cloud on AWS, so any non-overlapping private IP space could be used. If you will be using a Layer 2 VPN for connectivity, you can extend some of your IP networks from your on-premises to VMware Cloud on AWS. Remember, a Layer 2 VPN is required for live workload migrations. Regardless of the VPN connection you use, there is no limit to the number of logical networks you can create. The next item to consider is providing public internet connectivity to any workloads that may require that type of access. To give access between the internet and a workload running in VMware Cloud on AWS, a public IP address will be needed. Requesting a public IP can be done through the VMC console after deployment, but you should start to think about what workloads may need this type of access now. Once you have been granted a public IP, you can use network address translation rules to allow traffic to specific ports and specific virtual machines. Finally, you will want to start discussions with your networking team about your VPN connectivity needs for both the management and compute gateways. Your management VPN will allow connectivity between your on-premises vCenter environment and your VMware Cloud on AWS management components. This will be an IPsec VPN and can run over the internet or over AWS Direct Connect. VMware has provided detailed configuration guides and some helpful blogs focused on configuring the management VPN, including specifications on the required protocols, encryption algorithm, hashing algorithm, and Diffie-Hellman group settings. The second VPN you will need to consider is the Compute VPN, which handles network traffic for your workload VMs. If you are using an IPsec VPN here, the settings will be very similar to the configurations for the IPsec VPN for management. But you have a second option for the compute connection in the form of a Layer 2 VPN, which will allow you to stretch your IP network from on-premises to VMware Cloud on AWS. With the Layer 2 VPN option, you can utilize a standalone NSX Edge or other VPN-compatible device deployed on-premises. Plus, if you already have NSX deployed on-premises, you are all set. You can easily configure the Layer 2 VPN using your current NSX manager. 
Details on configuring the Compute VPN, including the Layer 2 VPN settings, are also highlighted in the Configurations Guides. Once you have successfully set up your two VPNs, you will complete the connection process by configuring the necessary firewall rules and DNS for the gateways using the VMware Cloud on AWS console. It may take some time for your networking team to get everything in place for these VPNs, so it's best to start now. This concludes our explanation of how to prepare for your network connectivity on VMware Cloud on AWS. Thank you.